com your questions in the in the comments and i will take them throughout and also at the end amen amen Praise the Lord. All right. So personality of the fivefold. Now, according to Ephesians chapter four, according to Ephesians chapter four, it says Ephesians four eleven to thirteen. It says, and he gave us some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the union of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ no I'm not going in full depth of information tonight but I'm sharing with you the basics to help you to understand what each office the different offices that there are and what each office actually entails what the personality or character of our characteristics of such a person who is called to that office will operate in so so that way you guys will be able to somewhat understand or identify what office you flow from all right i see um superstar britney it's good to have you on britney <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with the apostle. So as you guys would have seen on the um, on the flyer that I would have sent, we are using the finger rule. We're pretty much using the finger rule for the fivefold office. So it is basically the apostle. It's the apostle. It's the prophet. It's the evangelist. It is the pastor, and it is the teacher. So we have the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. So we're going to break it down. The first one is the apostle, and understand this: that the apostle is said to be at the highest. He is the commander, and he is the one that operates at a greater dimension or greater capacity among all the others. No, I want you to get this that whatever office it is that you operate in it's not a matriculation process a lot of persons tend to ask that question it is not a process of matriculation or anything where you go from one to the other you are called to one specific office however you may function in more than one based on which office it is that you operate in so you don't become an evangelist today and then within the next three months, you are now a pastor. And then give it another year, you become a prophet. And then after that, you become an apostle. I'm sick and tired of seeing these folks become a pastor. And then within a short space of time, they graduate and they cross over into another office. It truly does not work like that. However, there are some persons like myself. I have been operating as a prophet since I was told uh, about that in 2012. However, the more I I grew I realized that it was more of it was it was really more of an apostolic call based on the church plantings that the several church plantings that we have done the teaching the training in the churches and all that we have done it's really more of an apostolic call but am I want to say hey call me apostle when that time has come for me to walk in the fullness of that office then I will I will I will get into that but for many it is really a title thing where it's really you know going from one title to the next being addressed or called at the highest of the titles i tell you this tonight that it, i've always said it it is far better for you to have a function than to have a title than for you to have a title and not have a function so i operate very highly in the office of an apostle am i called an apostle no am i ordained as an apostle no i'm not there as yet but i function as such however i can have the title of an apostle i know many apostles that literally do not do as much as as a quarter of what I'm actually doing right now so it is better to have a function than to have a title than have a title and not have any form of functionality or grace behind it so the apostles apostles the 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 Greek word for apostles is apostolos apostolos and this means they are the saint ones so apostles are the saint ones in order for one to be an apostle that person would have to have an have an encounter with Jesus where they 
have seen or met with Jesus where they are given a specific assignment that they will carry through in the earth realm um, as the Lord would have lead. So the personality of an apostle is apostles are commanders. Apostles are the commanders. They are the serious guys. They command. When I say command, they're not just commanding and controlling people. There's a difference between control and command. People that operate in the realm of control, especially where people, people are concerned, that is usually done on a basis of manipulation and deception. But when someone is speaking a command, they have to operate in a specific office with a divine, with a level of authority that is given to them for them to exercise any form of command. So apostles are the sent ones, the serious ones that operate as commanders. They are sent to command regions and territories. So when I tell you that the grace that is on an apostle's life is far greater than any other, they're not just sent to command a group of people, but they are sent to command, to legislate, to, to have a, a total control command over regions, over states, over territories. Apostles will literally go in and they will claim regions and territories. That's the grace that they carry. So understand that there are different levels of power and anointing that is given to each person. The highest level of power that is given to any man is dominion. And this is what apostles uh, operate in. So there are people, I've shared this before, that uh, to say that oh this man or that woman of god is highly anointed anointing is relative anyone can be anointing but to have the power of god that is what makes the difference and for someone to have the true power of god there are different levels to the power of god because god's power in the area of ministry is called anointing and that's just ministry alone that's just preaching and laying hands and casting devils out and sick being healed etc that's just the anointing his power in the area of, of spiritual warfare is called might. So when you begin to wage war against prince, against our warlocks, wizard, witches, the hosts and agents of hell, you're given a level of power, a dimension of power that is called might. When it comes to uh, the area of, 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 of territories and region, the power that is given is called dominion. So anyone can preach, but not anyone has that grace to go into a territory territory or region and to take over the entire territory. Anyone can go into a church and pray, but not anyone can go in and claim an entire region and subdue kings and subdue, you know, wizards and witches. There's uh, there are persons that literally, whenever they begin to go through Jezebelic attack, they begin to quiver and shake and they begin to crumble because Jezebel attacks is something, especially witches. Witches, is, witches send and release these attacks that will literally mess with your mind witches will mess with your mind to the point where you feel like you're losing your mind you can't keep a focus you can't keep focus you can't stay together you're not grounded you feel like you're fainting you're falling over you you can't do anything at all basically when for those who do not carry the grace to operate in such a capacity but when it comes to, to apostles they are literally commanders that do not back down so apostles the the, the personality and the characteristics of apostles is when they go in they bring order apostles do not like to see things that are out of order so they go in and they bring order to anything that is out of place they hate this order so where the church is concerned where a nation is concerned when apostles go in they are going in with apostolic order and patterns will be set that things will begin to flow accordingly so catch this by the spirit when it comes to apostles and prophets we don't follow the protocols but we go into set spiritual protocols I know it's a bit confusing. It doesn't make sense. We don't follow protocols, but we set protocols, which means that when we go in, if the church service, if there's an order or protocol for service, not that we're not that we are um, we're antagonists, you know, according to you know, based on a churches, you know, um, whatever they have said or whatever. But when we go in, if the spirit of the Lord wants to move and to do something completely different, we are just going to flow with the spirit of God, which means I don't care what time pastor needs to go on. If the spirit of the Lord wants to be worshipped, we are going to worship. If the spirit of the Lord wants us to lay in the lay in the presence of God, seeking His face for the entire three hours, two hours of service. 
praise. We're going to do just that. No preaching will be done. No praise and worship will be done. We will stay in the face of God. If it is that something is not right, the apostles will just call a meeting just like that and they will begin to bring order. So apostles will go in and they will bring order to things that are not in place. By doing this, apostles are really the ones that bring things into alignment. They're very stern. They're very straight. They bring things into divine alignment. They bring purpose into alignment and they are good with connecting and joining relationships. So if you want to understand the full the full depth of who an apostle is, you really have to study on the apostle Paul. He he for me was one of the greatest apostles throughout the throughout the, the text in the scriptures basically. He was one that went and he pioneered. He planted churches and he would go from church to church to ensure that things are being kept in order that there is a there's a relationship between the churches that there's a relationship between the leaders and so on and so forth. So where you find churches are uh, where a leader is opposing another leader and the pastor is fighting against the prophet. When apostles are in the fold and in the mix, these things cannot happen because they are going to call it all through a rebuke and reproof. Things must be in order. It is so sad that 99% of books that I have read oftentimes say that prophets and pastors do not get along. I cannot understand why when we're called to operate as a fivefold. The reason why there is so much dysfunction in the body of Christ, it is simply because because we cannot work together because everyone wants to be the head. Everyone wants to be the leader. Everyone wants to be the one that is known and seen and we're not working together. And so you find that the apostle is starting his own church. The pastor is starting his own church. The evangelist wants to go start his own church. Even the teacher is starting his or her own church. So there is no, there's no, there's no collectivity. There's no, you know, unity or cohesiveness when it comes to the things of God where church or ministry is concerned, which is why there's not much growth, there's not much revival uh, that is spreading as it truly should because we don't want to work together. So apostles are good at building relationships. Apostles, they confront high demonic powers and they understand their assignment and they will not back down. So I've seen persons say, I have an assignment to do something. The Lord is calling me into the ministry of, you know, women's ministry or something of that sort. But they say, oh, I'm afraid because people keep talking and my family don't understand me and my family is fighting against me. There's no way you could ever be called to be an apostle or a prophet to that extent if this is what you are afraid of. I think on Wednesday night I spoke and I said that if it is your, if it, if it is that you are in a space where the warfare you're dealing with is merely coming from your family and it is affecting you to the point where you can't flow what if the warfare was coming from the bigger heads what if your warfare was not family but what if your warfare was from other prophets other apostles what if what if it was from the governmental sector then how on earth would you would you manage so catch this brooks some of us, it is our mothers and fathers that we hope that would have been there for us, but they're not there. And that's hot. I understand. I get it. But what if it was another prophet that was fighting against you? Another prophet that is praying against your name. And when I say praying, you know that when prophets pray, they go in. So what if a prophet was praying all night on your name that God will expose you, bring you down, destroy you? You, you stand no chance unless you can pray and confront. You truly stand no chance. So when we talk about someone who is called to be an apostle, they are literal they, they they confront any form of high satanic or demonic powers and they are not backing down any at all they will go into regions and territories knowing that strongholds and strong men and sorcery and witchcraft divination is in that region and they will still go in why because they are they're they're like spiritual bulldozers they will go in and they will press over anything until it is pushed over they will not back down from anything at all so they go in intending to take over. So there are some people when they go in to start ministries or churches or to do any work for the Lord, they will begin to scout the land out to see what, what level of witchcraft or divination or whatever is in that region. And then they will decide whether they will go in or not, whether they, how they will go in. When it comes to apostles, apostles will just go in and take over altogether because they already know that they already have the key. They're going in with the key, knowing the apostles are going in, knowing that they have the key, the key of God has already been placed on their shoulders in their hands and they're going in knowing that they are also the key let me share something with you 
every apostle, every prophet, they have a, a prophetic and apostolic toolkit that they operate with. Oh no, I can't pull this up. Uh, they have a toolkit that they operate with. How can I do this? So when a doctor goes to work, that doctor goes to work with his, he goes to work with everything that he needs to use in his office. If a carpenter goes to work, he's going in with everything that he needs. If a mason goes to work, he's going in with everything that he needs. If a prophet is going in or an apostle is going in, he is literally going in with everything that he needs to actually get the job done. So apostles and prophets, they have prophetic toolkits. They have a prophetic toolkit. For example, a pro a, an apostle or a prophet does not carry a key, but they are the key. So the scripture speaks about the key of David that has been placed on our shoulders. The Bible says, I have given you the keys. And so whatever you buy, Bind on earth is born in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. It says that he has given us the hammer and not just given us, but we are the hammers in the earth realm. So in Jeremiah 51 verse 20, it says, you are the hammer and weapon of war. You are the hammer and the weapon of war. With you, I will break nations in pieces. With you, I will destroy kingdoms. With you, I will break man and with you, I break in pieces man and woman. With you, I break in pieces the old man and the youth. So it means that apostles are able to go in as a literal hammer in the realm of the spirit. Understand that if you want to knock down stubborn, tough walls, strong foundations, it takes a hammer that you have to use to pound the walls down that's who you are as an apostle or as a prophet you're not called to be timid you're not called to be shy you're not called to be uncertain but you're going down to bulldozer and to hammer down anything that is not right that is not of god so apostles go in as commanders over the five four to take regions unannounced and turn everything upside down they go into build wherever whenever or wherever an apostle goes into any region they go in to build they're not just going in for a show to say oh uh prophets all prophets were gucci gucci bro i see people posting on social media constantly that if you're a prophet you have to wear gucci can somebody buy me something gucci because like I, I guess i'm not a prophet i'm not i i ain't got no gucci yet i'm not in the gucci line just yet so somebody should probably buy me something by god's grace so they go in, they build. Once a prophet goes into town, they're going to build something, right? They're going to plant schools. They're going to build ministries. They're going to pioneer new movements of worship, revival. Once an apostle goes in, you're going to feel the effect of that apostle in that region. Even so, a few months ago, I discovered something. I learned something about the angelic. I was getting ready to travel um, to go for ministry. And I saw my angels... And I, I, I saw them ushering me from one from one city to the next. And when I got to another city, I saw, before I got there, I saw a host of angels, a huge host of angels waiting on my arrival. And the angels that carried me handed me over to the other angels in another city. So the angels of that city were waiting for me to come in. And I realized that there are literal angels that are set over each gate, each city, each nation. The same thing for demonic spirits. When a prophet or an apostle goes into a town, even devils know that an apostle is coming into town and they become terrified because of the grace that that particular apostle or prophet is coming in with. That's the grace that you carry. So if you're a afraid of warfare you're afraid of what people have to see you're afraid of who will fight against you who will turn against you how lonely your life will become baby this is not for you can i get an amen 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 amen, amen. thank you my son <laughs> amen amen so they are visionaries apostles are visionaries they build because they are visionaries. Apostles have a vision. 
they have a vision and they can see through to the, the, the fullness of the manifestation and the development of that vision that they carry. So apostles are not just going in for a, a one-time, you know, a one-time glory, a one-time hype. They're going in to build something because they have a vision. Apostles are able to see something that they want to achieve. And not just, not just that they're visionaries, but apostles, they vision the hardest and the most difficult things. Apostles who want to go in and build a whole church in a region and territory where there are no churches. It's underdeveloped. It's remote. You know, there's no fire that's there. They find the hard and the difficult things to go in to do. Good night, Mr. Strawberry. I declare your family is sweet and blessed because of you. <laughs> that's funny. May your family, Amen. may your life become sweet Amen. because of your picture that is there. So they're visionaries. They take on the difficult stuff. They, they, they have a vision. And this is why where apostles and prophets tend to, they tend to swing the pendulum and they tend to isolate a lot because they, they carry a vision that it's bigger than them. There's some of you that are on, you have a vision, you carry a vision, but you have no idea how that vision is going to come through, come to pass. You have no idea how that vision is going to manifest because oftentimes God will give you a vision that it doesn't align with your pocket. It doesn't align with your finances. He will call you to an assignment. You have no idea how you're going to fund this thing. And this is why we often become frustrated because we are, we are, we, we, we exist. We live in two realms at the same time, apostles and prophets. I'm giving you you kind of both for the apostles and the prophets apostles and prophets coexist in two different realms simultaneously so even though we're here in the physical i'm telling you before i came on i had a whole conversation for the past two hours and and priors with my husband about the whole church and stuff and i'll share that at the end but we coexist in two different realms simultaneously which means that even though we're here in the physical we're also perceiving and seeing things by the spirit that we have not yet touched by the spirit my foot is already in a church my foot is already in another area that physically i have not come into yet so no my physical man is still awaiting the manifestation of what my spirit man is already existing in me i'm already a millionaire not just by one million but several millions but my foot has not stepped into the fullness of certain things as yet so it causes frustration. So Proverbs says, hope default makes the heart sick because you see something, you have birthed something out, you have manifested something in the spirit realm, but it is yet to manifest in the physical. This is why many times as a prophet, you become so frustrated because you know you're called to the prophetic. You know you're called to do this. You know you're called to pioneer and to do certain things, but you're yet to see the manifestation. What you actually see is the warfare that precedes it. It's the warfare warfare that comes before is the luck that comes before is the the setbacks that come before the strong man that stands in the door to try to block you but this is why you're called as a prophet or as an apostle because in this place what you begin to do is you have a greater urgency to press into a deeper place of prayer and intercession because now the lord is pushing you to birth out in the natural listen it is easy to birth out in the spirit anything but it takes an apostle that has a spiritual resilience to stay in the place of prayer, to birth it out from the spirit into the natural. So apostles and prophets are resilient by nature. They will press into prayer with resilience, with tenacity, with a spirit of a bulldozer. And they will birth out from the spirit, whatever is there that they have birthed out into the physical. So you have to literally, you have to be resilient. You have to pray certain things through you cannot give up in the midst of in the midst of warfare some people will quit because it, it becomes too much but apostles are resilient you can't have a jelly back you have to have a back made of iron brass so they are visionaries they plant churches they're able to reach the unchurched so apostles have a way to, apostles and even prophets have a way of reaching the unchurched. It is easy for an evangelist or a pastor or anyone to go into a church that is filled with Holy Ghost filled people 
and begin to preach and chant fire, Holy Ghost tongues, it's easy. But it takes a true apostle like Ezekiel to go into a place where it's nothing but dried bones, dead bones, emptiness, nothingness, and bring life to that place. No one wants the hard stuff. Everyone wants the easy stuff. People want to go into things that are already done. The reason why things are difficult for some of you guys tonight, because the grace that God has given you is the grace to start from scratch. The reason why no one will help you, no one will mentor you, no one will give to you, no one will sponsor, no one will donate because you're called to build from scratch. All, almost all of my uncles and four parents have been pastors. And they're denominational. I grew up as that. And every time I talk to them, they say to me, why don't you come and pass in one of this church location? And I'm like, no, I'm not caught at that. I'm more, I'm more apostolic and prophetic. I can't do in your church what I would do in my church. I can't wear a pants in peace, for heaven's sake, a trousers in peace. If I want to turn the whole church upside down, I have to go and report to a bishop. I can't do that have to ask permission to do every single thing. I can't do that. And so they say, oh, you're, you're the rebellious one. You're the black sheep in the family because everyone is pastored in a particular denomination. Me, I will start from scratch, which means when you go through a certain denomination, they already have a whole building for you. They already have people who are waiting for you to come. They already have musicians and everything in place. But when you start from scratch, bro, you can't find a keyboard player. You can't find the psalmist. You don't know how you're going to do this. You don't know how you're going to do that. You have to start from scratch. So some of you are frustrated because you're in a place where it seems like nothing is working out. But God surely has given you the grace to start from scratch. You are a visionary and you carry the grace to attract wealth. You carry the grace to attract destiny helpers. You carry the grace to attract everything that you need. You carry a magnetic grace that will attract everything you need to build in that season. And it will get done. So you're able to reach the unshirt. Some people, as I said, do not want to go in a place where it is dry. There's people don't know how to worship. People don't know how to speak in tongues. People don't know how to do anything. You now have to go in and bring that fire. When Ezekiel went in and he saw the, the valley of dry bones, he said, can these dry bones live? God says, I don't know. What are you asking me for? You tell me. You're the prophet. You're the apostle. So they're visionaries. They plant. They build. They're good with building relationships. The final uh, personality I'll share is they are intrinsically motivated. They're intrinsically motivated, which means their motivation comes from within. It's not external. It's not extrinsic. So guess what? If you're waiting on me, to have a prayer meeting, to build you, to pump you, to push you, this is not for you. You have to carry your own fire. We need each other. We need a community. But for your assignment, you need to push your own fire. You, your, your motivation, your inspiration, your encouragement must come from within, which means that it's not extrinsic. You're not looking for a group of people to show up for you to do whatever you need to do. If you show up, you're having a whole revival meeting and you show up and only 10 people come, only 20 people come and you were expecting 100, you're still motivated because you know what you have seen, which means you continue to go in, you continue to till the soil, you continue to bulldoze, you continue to pioneer until that thing has fully broken forth. Then you will see the manifestation. I've seen many people go in uh, to plant churches and over a period of time, only a small amount of people come and they quit in no time they did not wait until the fullness have truly been discovered there's a true story that has been spoken of a man that was um i think it's in africa i think it's in africa he bought this land and he was told that he felt like there was gold underneath and he was digging for gold i think he spent about six months digging for gold and he, he bought he bought bulldozers excavators all these equipments these heavy equipment and he was digging 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 for six months he saw no gold he saw the property and all the the, the equipment and stuff the man he sold it to came in and 15 minutes later the man found gold what am i saying 
have resilience be motivated inside so whatever is happening on the outside it does not affect you any at all whatever you are facing and dealing with externally the external things should not affect you any at all rather what so what is on the outside should not have any impact or effect on what you carry on the inside rather what you carry on the inside of you should be that grace and that substance that will have an impact or effect on everything that is external basically which means that you don't go in and respond to atmospheres when you go in atmospheres response to what is within you for this the scripture says that greater is in ye than he that is in the world an apostle will understand the scripture to the fullness we don't go in saying oh this atmosphere is not right the atmosphere is not set no when you go in the atmosphere must begin to line up when you go in and you begin to pray and speak and chant the fire of the holy spirit everything must begin to shift and come into perfect alignment so we take control and we command atmospheres and climate to begin to come into perfect alignment Amen. Amen. So that is the personality of apostles in a nutshell. When it comes to prophets, it's somewhat the, it's somewhat the same grace, the same personality. They go through a lot of affliction and struggles. There's always this one thing that never goes away almost. It's like Paul said, there's a thorn in my flesh that just won't go away. And that one thing helps to keep you grounded. It's a part of your prophetic DNA. It helps to keep you grounded and humble. It helps to keep you seeking the face of God. So prophets are, so apostles, apostles are the serious ones, the commanders. Prophets are the withdrawn ones with a loud voice. So prophets, the personality of prophets, they are the withdrawn ones with a loud voice. So we're, we're the withdrawn, the isolated ones. We're the ones that doesn't want to be out in the spotlight and the public. I always say, I'm 110% introvert and no one believes me. Every time I, I say to my husband all the time, how am I going to be successful in ministry? And I don't like to do a live stream. I don't like to get on and do anything at all. I have to sit and I have to make up my mind for hours before I get on to do anything at all. I love what I do. I'm passionate about what I do. I love to empower and teach. I love it. But to get, but to get dressed and to come on, it's a big deal for me. It's a huge big deal. It's a, it's a task. I love to talk. I love it. But to get on in front of people, I hate the camera. I don't like it. It's not my thing. I should have filmed video for YouTube and it's like, it's, it's, I love it. But it, it's such a struggle sometimes. I want to be the woman that when I come on social media, I have my eyebrows done. I have my makeup done. Even if I don't have a full face beat, I have at least foundations on. I have my hair well groomed. I, that's who I want to be. I want to get on and I look proper. I look sophisticated. I look modest. I look beautiful all the time. But to do the whole makeup thing, bro, I, I can't bother with that stuff. I can't do it all. I don't like it. I don't like it. If it were up to me... I wouldn't do anything and I would just come on just anyhow. But you have to be presentable. You have to be presentable. You have to put yourself together. I don't like it. So prophets are really the withdrawn ones with a loud voice. So they, they usually, they're usually withdrawn and because they spend a lot of time seeking the face of God. They spend a lot of time in the presence of God. They spend a lot of time in the presence of God seeking his face. Which means they're not they're not doing Facebook lives every single day. I, I I ask all the and I'm not bashing anyone. Everyone does their thing differently. So if someone if someone truly is able to go on and pray every single night, maybe they are pray throughout the day or something. But how how maybe someone can answer? How do we find the time to really do this every single day or almost every single day nonstop? At what point do you find the time to seek God, to spend time to listen, to seek, 
if you're always saying and never silent. So I've always said that for me personally, as for me personally, as a prophetic voice, I disappear a lot. I go missing a lot. Ever so often, I, 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 I go off. I'm not on social media. I'm not doing videos. I'm not doing anything at all. I just go missing. For this reason, I'm always saying, I pray that the Lord will send someone. I pray the Lord will just help me to train someone that is truly bold and you know nurtured in their call that can come on this platform and be with you guys sometimes. Because sometimes I just want to be in a quiet place, just listening. Just in meditation. So prophets understand this as a prophets and apostles. You don't have to be on social media or in the public or in a place where you can be seen to maintain relevance. Someone said to me, you have to go live on Facebook and YouTube or you have to post every day. You have to do that as constantly as you can. Because you want to make sure that you're not being forgotten. You're, you're remaining relevant. Your voice is remaining relevant. But what if I don't have anything to say? What if I don't have anything to share? What if the Lord is calling me into a place of isolation where he wants to be with me alone? So I have discovered that it is not your frequency or consistency on any platform that will dictate how relevant you become. But it is the substance of what you are sharing and the grace that you carry. So that means if I, if I, disappear, for, if I disappear for an entire week or a month, when I come back, I'm going to be remembered. But people are going to come on my live stream. Give me a couple of streams, two or three. People will still come on because what I'm sharing is not something that is just common. I'm sharing something that is fresh. You have to come on sharing something that is fresh, that is relevant, that is on point, that is key. That when it is delivered, people will begin to gravitate and feast on it because their spirit is hungry for whatever it is that you are dishing and serving out. So you must speak with substance. There's some people who are out every single day. They're speaking. They're doing a lot. But there's no relevance and potency to whatever it is that they're sharing. So we have to learn to take the time to seek the face of God. So prophets are usually isolated and withdrawn. They are heavily persecuted because of the message that they carry. Sometimes it will not be accepted. Sometimes people will misunderstand the grace that is on their life. And so there is going to be, there is going to be persecution. It is attached to it. It is impossible for you to carry a certain level of grace and there's no affliction or persecution. Jesus said, they didn't receive me, they didn't like me, they fought against me, which means they're going to do it to you too. They will not receive you and they will fight against you too. That's it. A lot of the times it's from the people you know. And that's completely fine. We get it, we accept it, that whatever. A prophet is without honor, except among his own. So if my own does not accept me, then I know for a fact that I have honor. Even the more, even when you don't accept me, that tells me even the more that I carry honor and influence in the spirit. So expect that in your own country, among your own people, they will not honor and receive you. They may not honor and receive you rather. So don't be discouraged if they don't. If they do, you are blessed and you're, you're lucky. You're lucky if they do and you're very blessed. So they, they swing the pendulum. They go from being happy one minute to being in a different emotion the next minute for multiple reasons. Maybe they're frustrated because what they see, they have to wait for the manifestation. Maybe they're carrying a prophetic burden. So prophets are prophetic burden bearers, especially based on the functionality that you operate in. If you're one that is an intercessor or a prophetic burden bearer, then you will find that you will go from waking up, being completely happy to being in a place where 
where the burden of the Lord just drops on you, where God is upset with the church, God is sad about the state of the church, so you're carrying your own emotions, you're carrying the emotions of God for the church, and it's just a whole different variety of emotions that is going on. But prophets and apostles are required to operate in great level of maturity, because even though you are, even though you're, you're in good spirit, but there is a deep sense of burden where the Lord is discouraged and jealous and sad about the state of the church. This does not mean that you have to, you have to project what you're feeling onto people. You do not project your emotions onto anyone. You must learn how to deal with this in the place of the prior closet. Without being bipolar, without being sensitive, without being, um, without being salty about everything that someone says, you have to know balance. There has to be some form of balance and leverage where you carry the different graces and the different burdens or emotions. So they swing the pendulum. Prophets, apostles are said to be the serious ones, but prophets are also very serious. They're very stern. They have singleness of purpose. It is either or either. It's either nay or yea. But you can't be in between two things at the same time. You're either serving God or you're not. You're straight or you're lean. You love women or you love men. What You have to choose one. But you can't be swinging with the two genders at the same time. I did that before, prophetess. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> Thank God for the grace and the glory of God. She is saved, Amen. sanctified, and delivered. Amen. <laughs> I picked the side. I, I wasn't confused. It was one at a time, one at a time. <laughs> Transparency is good. It helps others. So we have singleness of purpose. When we go into a church, it's either you're, you're hot or you're cold. It's either you want God or you don't want God. So I've been into atmospheres before where the atmosphere was not ready for what I had to deliver any at all. And I didn't even bother to do, I didn't even bother. Why? Not because I couldn't, I couldn't charge or set that atmosphere on fire. I've done that many times. But sometimes an apostle or a prophet is able to go in and to discern this atmosphere and these people aren't ready for this level. They aren't ready. So let me not even bother to waste my time there's a scale in the spirit that i operate by and i believe that many other prophets operate by you can tell where someone is for me on the scale for me is it's, it's like your phone battery basically you can tell if it's on red if it's on green or whatever color it is so when i see someone in the spirit i can tell what level they're on just like that boom so if you're on the icy side of things if you choose to live in the ice age and you don't want God any at all, then I don't have the time. Prophets do not have the time to waste. They're not time wasters. Prophets are the ones. So this is the prophets. They're always pointing. So they're very stern. They're very strict. They're always, you know, when your mom or your, your, your guardian or your parent is telling you, I told you not to do that. And they're very strict. They're very stern at what they say. This is what prophets, this is how prophets operate. We will see something and we want to get at it suddenly. For this reason, it is said that prophets and pastors do not get along because when a prophet see something they want to get it done suddenly and right away as they see it in the spirit they want to begin to take it on pastors on the other hand they will want to pray about it they want to ensure that it will not affect the sheep and it is the right time and it is this and it is that they want to do all of that but prophet they're they're the green lights they want to go they want to go they want to take that mission on. They want to just go and begin to do what it is that God is sending them to do. They're burden bearers. They're persecuted. Uh, there's a lot that I could do as it relates to the prophetic. But this is really the, this is really the uh, personality of prophets. They, they tackle things head on. They don't back down. Their emotions can be all over the place sometimes. But still, they're not bipolar. It may feel like one minute you're good and next minute it feels like you're somewhat depressed because it gets it, it becomes a lot 
And even though you know that intrinsically you are motivated and you can manage things, sometimes it becomes really overbearing to the point where it feels like it is too much. And you want to quit and throw the towel in. But even so, you can't do it any at all. You're not permitted to. Based on, based on your grace and where you have come in your prophetic call, you get to a place where you're not even your own anymore. There are some women who are in abusive relationships. They can't leave even if they wanted to. Some of us as prophets, we, we've come too far. We don't have a choice anymore. Me, I don't have a choice anymore. Even if I wanted to go, Jesus would not let me go. I don't have a choice. I don't. I don't have a choice. He will not permit me to any at all. Even when Jonah, Jonah was disobedient and Jonah left and God smote him. God, he had to go back. He had to go back. There's no running. There's no escape. I just pray that as I do this assignment, that my heart will continue to be in the right place. I can't run from the call from the assignment. I can't run from God. But I do pray that my heart will continue to be in the right place. That after all is said and done, Angela, that I will be able to see my father. I'll be able to see my master for eternity. You have the evangelist. Evangelists are the jovial warriors. The jovial warriors. They, they have a bubbly personality, but, but beneath the surface, they have a bubbly personality, but beneath the surface, they're bold warriors. If you have questions, let me, let me run through this. I'm almost finished. Let me run through this and then I'll take the questions after. So just write your questions down so you don't forget them. So evangelists are jovial warriors. They're bubbly. They have a bubbly, friendly personality. But beneath, they are bold warriors. They are the, tr they are the trouble markers of the fivefold. The trouble markers of the fivefold. Which means they go in and they trouble regions and territories. By doing this, they, they trouble the system, the regions, the territories. They provoke, they till the soil for soul winning. They're bubbly and they have a bubbly and a friendly personality because they have to be able to go in and confront and communicate with people, especially the unsaved. So it is the evangelist that their, their personality is geared towards uh, spending time with the unsaved and the unchurched. It is easy for them to have conversations with unsaved. And you may see them hanging out with them. Not because that's their company, but they want to win them over to God. So evangelists, they're very friendly. They have a bubbly personality. They're very charismatic. As an evangelist, you have to be able to go in as charismatic as you can. Every evangelist is different. But I'd, I'd say all the evangelists I have seen, watched, met, worked with, they're always very charismatic. Why? Because when you're going out to win souls, you're taking souls from a world of excitement and fun and vibe and energy. And you don't want to bring them over or make it seem as though you're bringing them into this boring Christian life. You want to be as energetic, as lively, as fiery as you possibly can so you can win souls for the kingdom of God. Not just by your charisma but by the anointing and the grace of God that is too also upon your life so they carry the message of repentance and the kingdom they carry the message of repentance and they bear the kingdom of God and they operate with also signs and wonders so evangelists operate in the office of an evangelist but they can be prophetic in their ministration so evangelists are not prophets, but they can be prophetic in their ministrations. This means they can operate in the gifts. So there are nine gifts of the spirit. To one by the spirit is given the gift of wisdom and word of knowledge, etc. And another by the same spirit, the gift of healing. So you will find that evangelists will operate in the gifts of healing, in the gifts of word of knowledge, which means that they will tell, they will call someone up by name. They will tell them their telephone number. They will tell them exactly what's going on in their life but this does not make them a prophet 
they are prophetic gifts that people can operate in, but that does not mean that they're called to be a prophet. Word of knowledge is a prophetic gift. It tells people their business and everything that they're going through. It calls names. When a prophet calls a name or tells someone what their address is, what their mom's name is, etc., that's not prophecy. That is word of knowledge. Evangelists have the ability to operate in that capacity. It's a gift, not an office. Word of knowledge is a gift, not an office. So if you're good with calling names, you're good with age, you're good with address and all the fine um, details, that's word of knowledge, not prophecy. Prophecy is prediction of futuristic events. So prophets that are deep, they're deep in word of knowledge. It's not prophecy. Prophecy is when I tell you that tomorrow someone will deposit 3,000 US dollars into your bank account. And tomorrow by the said time it happens, that's prophecy. But if I say you woke up and you had, you had, um, you had cinnamon crunch and then you took a hot shower and you put on your gold slippers and you drove your BMW latest model so and so, that's word of knowledge. And if you do that every day, chill, you're not a prophet. You're deep in word of knowledge, but you're not a prophet. So evangelists can be evangelists and they can also operate prophetically, which means they will, they will, um, they'll call names, they'll bring healing, they'll bring signs and wonders. And it's very important that evangelists operate in this capacity because the signs and wonders is really more so for unbelievers. It helps to stir and, you know, provoke, um, and energize the saints to stir them up. But it really is to attract unbelievers to know that this is the power of Jesus that is truly at work. So they're easy, their personality is easy flow, bub, easy flow, bubbly, friendly personality, charismatic. They love to go out to minister to unsaved and the unchurched to win them over to the fold. Evangelists. You have pastors. So pastors, the personality of pastors is they are the tender-hearted ones. Pastors are the tender-hearted ones. So pastors are normally loving sensitive and tender-hearted pastors are the shepherds really they're the shepherd for the fold so they're the ones that watch over the sheep so if you can just imagine the analogy of a, sh of a shepherd tending to the sheep so you are going to be the one that will care for them to feed them. So you're, you're called as a shepherd over a flock. You're called to feed them. You're called to nurture them. You're called to bring healing. If they're, if they're, if they're wounded, if they're hurt, you're called to bring healing, wholeness, development. So you're called to do all the above, to feed them by whatever means to help, to develop, to nurture them, to heal the broken heart, the wound, the, the, the pain, whatever it is, the scars. The, the, the shepherd is called to bring healing in all areas. For this reason, they're the most vulnerable of all. For this reason, for those of you who are called into the pastoral, because of your tenderness, your care, your love, and your sensitivity, you can become the most vulnerable of all. Prophets are very vulnerable people too because they feel a lot. They know a lot. They feel a lot. They know more than they should know. But pastors, on the other hand, they're very vulnerable. It is easier for them to be hurt. It is easier for them to be used. Because they, they care a lot, they feel a lot, they give a lot. Pastors give everything and they give from a place of they give from a place of selflessness. So it is easy for a pastor to give everything of his or her back. And then when a sheep leaves the fold or disrespects or dishonor, it is easier for the pastor to feel more than anyone else. Because the pastor is married. This finger right here is said to be the pastor. Why? Because he's married to the church. Because he's married to the church, if one leaves or one disrespects or dishonors, he's going to feel it with every fiber of his being. This is why the statistic for, pastor, for suicide where the pastoral is concerned is very high. Pastors have committed suicide more than anyone else. 
Because it is very hard for you to care for a people, to serve a people. To take them up from they were nothing, build them, teach them, give to them, feed them, clothe them, build them up. As individuals, their confidence, everything. Bring them through deliverance. And then they come and they dishonor you. It hurts. Or when you are past and you have given your everything, but then you need help. Remember, oftentimes pastors are the ones, especially who are called to full-time ministry. It is especially pastors, prophets, apostles too, but it is especially pastors who are oftentimes called to full-time ministry. And I believe that pastors can be called to full-time ministry, but they can also have their businesses and they can still work. But even if they're in full-time, they can still have their businesses. But for those who are called to serve the church in its entirety with everything that they have, I do believe that they should be on payroll by that church. They should be cared for. There should be a pastoral system that is set in place for pastors. So if a pastor begins to go, if a pastor becomes sick, what system is set that can help the pastor to recover? If a pastor is the one who is hurting and dealing with depression or anything at all, what system is set? Is the grace that is given from the pastor reciprocated back to him when he truly needs it the most? See, when, I'm, when a person, when a congregant can mess up and get pregnant out of wedlock and do the most... And the pastor can sit and counsel him and bring him back to the fold, bring him back, restore him, build him up. Like nothing happened because we all sin, we all fall short. When the pastor becomes the one to fall in that place, is that same grace reciprocated? Or is it said that, oh, I can't believe you're a pastor and a prophet and you did that, you should be banned. There's no way you can continue to be a pastor or a prophet and you messed up. The same grace should suffice. So they care for the broken, the lost, the hurt, and the wounded. They're very compassionate. They love to build. They love to build people, to build them up. Uh, pastors care about the holistic human being. They care about the holistic individual. So pastors are the ones that they don't just care about you spiritually, but they care about you physically, spiritually, physically, emotionally. So they want you to grow in your spirituality. They want you to grow in your purpose in your identity, and in who God has actually called you to be. So they put in a lot of work. That's in a nutshell, that's the personality of a pastor. If you don't have the patience to deal with people, the grace or the patience to deal with people, then you're not called to the pastoral. It takes a lot of patience, a lot of grace. Pastors require a lot of grace, a lot of patience. Then you have the teacher. The final one is the teacher. So teachers are law enforcers. Teachers are law enforcers. So they normally have a strong, they normally have a, a headstrong personality. They're very willful and determined. Teachers are very willful and determined. They, determined. they want you to learn. They want you to get it. They do not, they, they don't like arguments. They are not going to engage in debates and, you know, um, unnecessary arguments with anyone because they know what they know. And they want you to get nothing but the truth. So they're like the policemen of the fivefold. Pa teachers are like the policemen of the fivefold. They help to maintain ordinances, sound doctrine, and to ensure that law, they enforce law, which is really a sound doctrine, the truth of what the scripture says. So they patrol the body of Christ to search wherever there is a law or anything that, anything that is broken or, or misaligned. And they bring truth. They bring truth. They want persons to... Know the word of God for themselves. So that way they cannot be deceived or tossed to and fro by every unsound doctrine or wind that comes basically. So they challenge, teachers love to challenge religious systems and doctrinal errors. So wherever there is religiosity, they will confront and they will challenge to bring truth reformation and transformation 
through the word of God, by the spirit of God. So to break it down, I want to make sure I take some time to answer questions for anyone that have questions. To break it down, you have the apostle, and I'll give you another word that will help you to understand each. So you have the apostle. The apostle governs. So I'm going to give you all the fivefold with the capital G. So the apostle, the apostle governs. The prophet guides. He points and he guides. The evangelist gathers. He goes and he gathers the souls. The pastor guards. And the teacher groans. So with the word and the teaching, the teacher helped to groan them, to help them to become grounded in the word of God. To be sown in the word of God. So apostle gathers, prophet guide, evangelist gathers, the teacher, the pastor guards, and the teacher groans them. So these are a few of the characteristics or personalities of the fivefold. So based on your personality, if you're one that is more charismatic, you know, freelance, just want to go out to win souls, to go minister to the prostitutes, um, to go minister to the homosexuals, to go out into the clubs, the streets, the highways, the byways, you want to win souls, you want to bring truth to those who are lost, confused, you're the evangelist. If you are, if you are one who is always wanting to to bring warning, to bring direction, to tell what the will of the Lord is before it happens. You see things before it happens. You're you're the you're the the prophet. If you're one that wants to to build, to plant, to set, to pioneer something that is new, you are aggressive, resilient, strong-willed. You're the apostle. If you are one that loves people, you want to you want to stay with people, to grow with them, to build with them, to build relationships, to empower, to see growth. You're the pastor. If you're one that loves to study you love theology you love anything where the doctrine is concerned teaching is concerned then you are the teacher amen amen all right so let me take a few questions for those of you that came on late you can go back and watch um you can go back and watch um let me take some questions then we will do a prayer of activation I think I want to do a YouTube live stream if I can. So if you have questions, you can put it in the comments or you can unmute and ask. So you can either unmute and ask your question or you can put it in the comments. Feel free. Don't be shy. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. So um, when they say that you have an apostolic anointing, does that mean that you operate in the fivefold ministry? You do. So apostles are the only one that have the ability to operate as an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, teacher, evangelist. Apostles can operate in all the above. A past and a prophet can also operate in all the above. So only to only the apostle, the prophet cannot be an apostle, but the the apostle is both an apostle, prophet, all the others. The prophet can be a prophet and all the others don't. Hello, good night. Good night. I'm, I'm new here. I'm, I am new. It's good to have you. Thanks for joining. Oh, um, uh, prophetess, um, uh, um, when you're intercessor, when time, when time, I mean, actually, um, sorry, intercessor, when, that, when you have pray, like, you can't see things. As an intercessor? Yeah. Um, certainly. Because when time I pray more when we receive things. Hmm. Right. So as you pray, the Spirit of the Lord will begin to reveal uh, certain things to you. As he reveals, it could be something that he wants to draw your attention to, that he wants you to pray for, to pray against. Something that he wants to intercede on behalf of. Or someone, maybe. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So someone is asking, what if you see more than uh, what if you see more than one how to understand? Um, Alicia, can you unmute and ask so I can understand what you're asking? Yeah, how do you know if you a prophet, evangelist, 
because, I mean, you see all of yourself and all of this, so we all got the, you know, the traits of all of this, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, you see a lot of that in you to where we all probably work in a lot of the same areas, but it's not a predominant gift. That's the, that's what I'm trying to understand. Like, I have, uh, I see in the future, you know, I always have a lot of spiritual battles and stuff, so I'm, you know, th I know that I'm like a seer, but when they said the bubbly personality, that's like me. <laughs> and I want to go and gather souls and all that stuff and talk to everybody. So I'm like going back and forth, like, well, which one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so wherever, whatever, whatever ministration is is more dominant and constant, that's what you're called to. So where whatever, wherever your desire and your passion lays the most, that one thing that is constant and dominant, that's what you're going to be called to, as well as guys you have to pray that the lord will reveal himself to you and the lord will speak to you to tell you exactly what it is that he's calling you into and once he does that he too will also send confirmation so it's not just something and this is general so it's, it's not just something that you desire because you're good at it it's something that you see over a period of time i'm good at being a teacher i love teaching i'm good at being a teacher but am i called to be a teacher no and it's consistent but am i called to be a teacher no so even so you still have to have an encounter with god to know him and what he is saying I would have chosen to be a teacher over a prophet. I would have chosen to be a teacher right, over a right. prophet because it is something that, you know, it is consistent. I'm good at it, but he chose something else. So sometimes it's not what you would desire either. It's what he's calling you into. So truthfully, we have to seek him and we have to spend time to seek him to know exactly what he is calling you to. The prophetic. Uh, yeah, that's deep. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Prophetess. Yes. I've dreamed recently, like I'm preaching in a marketplace and then place there. Mm -hmm. But more than one time. Are you involved in ministry? Yeah. What do you do? What do you do in ministry? I do intercession. Inter, I, do, I, do, I, do, I, do, I do intercession. Okay. All right. Um, if you dream that you're doing this over a period of time um, consistently, you can pray. It is it, it is something that the Lord, there's an assignment that the Lord wants you to fulfill. So now you have to pray and ask him what direction is it that he's leading you into and, um, you know, what is the timing for you to also do this? So there's definitely a call of God that is there that he's drawing your attention towards. So now you have to pray, where is it that he's sending you? What, what is the timing um, in terms of when is he releasing you to go to do this thing? Amen. Amen. That's it. Amen. Father, we bless you. Zede de brahasata. Come on, let us pray in the spirit for one minute. Ze brakatasava. Es gaprando shediskava. Lentes e brande. Es caparando sataya. Matos e brande. Zike le brando savaya. Zente libraha. Zente libreha sanda dabra. Es zaprando si capara. Lantas evai. Zekete libraha sanda dabaha. Latas evande de brahoshaya. Zekia Ramasanda Escaparando si vende Escaprando Shkadiskeda La prende escaparia We pray that you will pour your spirit out tonight, Father That you will ignite hearts You will ignite visions You will ignite mantles Ignite assignments Ignite the visions that you have given to your children tonight We pray and we declare That the call of God That the passion for you That the passion for the things of you To be used by you Will be active Activated and steered to come alive tonight than never before in Jesus' mighty name. Zede de Brahasaya. Zente Zibrohoshendeskava. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Master. All right, so there are more questions coming. Um, Anil Gibbons, can you come back on for a second, please? Where is he? There, yes. A uh, man of God. There's a very um there's a are you in Jamaica? Yes, I'm in Jamaica. Okay. There's a very there's a very 
I'm looking, I'm looking and I'm saying most persons that are on are not from Jamaica. But I'm looking at you and I'm seeing Jamaica. I saw the yellow and the yellow from the Jamaican flag was highlighted. Now, there's a heavy pastoral grace that's on your life. And you're, I, I don't know what denomination. You're a part of a, you're a, part of a de, it's not a ministry church, it's a denomination church. What church are you a part of? Um, church of God. A prophecy. Yes. No, um, it's not prophecy. No, it's not prophecy. Okay, so I see you're part of a denomination. I know I heard Church of God. I would almost say Church of God of prophecy, but I knew I heard Church of God. But the Lord is raising you up in this season as a pastor. You will operate as a pastor, but there's also prophetic grace that's on your life. So in this season, may the Lord begin to raise you up. May he begin to raise you up and pour a fresh anointing on you that you will serve. Even as a teacher, the Lord says he's giving you a very strong command and favor in the area of teaching um are you a teacher by any chance no have you taught any at all i'm just 23 what is it that you're pursuing currently computer science hmm I see in the realm of the spirit, I see you teaching. It could be within the pastoral, but there's definitely a pastoral grace that's on your life. I do pray, man of God, that wherever you serve, are you from Kingston? I'm from Manchester. Manchester, okay. So may the Lord pour his grace upon you like never before. May he teach you, may he impart you, may he ignite you, may he grace you. Lift your hands. I declare that there's a there's a horn of oil. There is Izida Brasava. There is a oil of there is a horn of oil that is now being poured upon your head. The Lord says, I'm anointing you, even as I anointed Aaron. The Lord says so am I anointing you even now the Lord says for I have called the forefathers even your forefathers the Lord says I have called even your father I have called as a leader a pastor but the Lord says now this mantle is coming upon your life and you will serve he says I will give you a voice I will give you a voice and you will minister and you will draw this generation to me the Lord says he will raise you up and he will release you so I speak divine release and divine activation. May the oil of God begin to pour upon you even now, like never before. Receive it now in Jesus' mighty name. Zete Branzova. I pull out of your spirit wherever you have become dormant wherever you have become silent wherever you have been overlooked I pull out of your belly I pull out of your spirit tonight may the spirit of God begin to flow out of you like rivers of living waters I ignite and I set a spark I set a spark to become a flame of fire within you may you burn for God the Lord says I call angels of angels just messengers of wind but i call you servants of fire so may the fire of god begin to ignite upon you tonight like never before in jesus mighty name may he set you on fire for him in jesus mighty name thank you holy spirit thank you father in jesus mighty name thank you holy spirit So someone. Hello, sister. I have a question. Uh, Sorry. Uh, hold on, Tiffany. <laughs> Let me take this. That's okay. in the comments for a while. So someone says, explain having a function over a title. So someone can operate in a particular functionality where they can prophesy. They can cast devils out. They can speak in tongues. They can bring healing, but they're not called to any specific office. By faith, as a matter of fact, by faith you can do and access anything. By faith and authority you can cast devils out. By level or by the level of grace that's on your life, you can access the angelic. There are people who operate in very high angelic, but they're not called to be a prophet or a pastor or anything. But they have access a dimension by prior, by faith. So it is better that you have a function where you know God and you can be used by God than to have a title because having a title is just a name. There's no power or authority in my name. It is what I do that makes my name something. 
right? All right. Um, who was it? Um, Tiffany. I think Tiffany. Tiffany. Yes. Mm -hmm. so I have a question. Um, when you went over, you know, all the traits of a prophet, um, I pretty much hit every single one of those. But I do work with my sister that the Lord called both of us into ministry to work together. And as you explain the traits of a um, evangelist, she has those traits. Like when we talk to people, I'm more stern, direct and seeking what the problem is and, and get into the point. And she's more friendly and she can sit and talk and talk and talk until whatever. It doesn't even matter. And then she could pray for them later on. I don't have the patience um, for that, but she definitely is more friendly and outgoing in that area when it comes to um, dealing with all kinds of different spirits and souls. So mm -hmm. my question is, how could, how can we bring like the best impact working together in our ministry? Because now that I know she is, um, and what I am, because we're completely different. How can we work together like in a, in a real impactful way on people? All right, so you're the one that is more straightforward. You don't have the time to do all of that, you know, sitting down and babysitting, but she's the one that is able to do that. Yes, she loves it. Okay, so if you up, if if you operate in the prophetic and you're the one that you know has you know the vision and that 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 drive to go to get things done, then you can. It's just, it it depends. It really depends what the assignment is. To be honest. It depends what the assignment okay. is. So if it is that you are the one that will, you know, release a word, but as it concerns, you can you can receive a word for a vision or something that needs to be done. And she may be the one that has the time to sit down, to bring direction, to bring counsel, direction, the strategies, the how to. So you may be the one that can give the word of knowledge about a particular issue, but she'll be the one to sit and to give that counsel or wisdom on how to get certain things done. Okay. So it really okay. depends what the assignment is that you're called to where ministry is concerned. Okay. Can you have a prophetic apostolic anointing? If you are an apostle, yes. Remember I said that an apostle is technically also a prophet, but a prophet is not an apostle. So you can have a prophetic, you can definitely have an apostolic prophetic anointing. If that makes sense, hopefully. All right, Angela, do you have your hand up? Yeah, I just forgot there for a second. Um, I, my question's kind of been answered, but um, kind of like what I feel like is like my whole life, like I, I'm kind of more like, like the personality of a prophet. Like my whole life has been that way, though. Like you know what I mean. But I'm just coming out of the world, like very recently. Um. But I know I have a lot of, um, God's given me restoration because things are coming so fast. I mean, so fast. Um, and that, but now, and now like, now all these other things are starting to like, um, come into play. Like, you know, like, I don't know how to explain what I'm trying to say. I'm very bad with words, but, uh, I guess I feel like, I don't know. I just went blank, completely blank, honestly. Uh. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I just, um, I guess I feel like, okay, so I've just come out of the world. Just recently, I got completely moved into a new city. Just, like, all of a sudden, God, I know it was God because, uh, like, I'm starting to, like, just be with him, like, seeking him, like, nonstop. Like, I want an encounter with him. And I used to kind of, like, try to, like, get a prophetic word here where I could or whatnot. Now I'm just, like, more, like, he can talk to me, too. You know what I mean? Right. He can't come to me and talk to me, and that's good. Uh, but I guess what I'm going to is, where do I, where do you go when you're, I'm in a state where, like, no, there's no prophetic ministry. There's no anything. And, like, I guess I just feel, I feel like when I go into, like, to church, that it's just, I gotta get planted though, right? I gotta get planted in a church, even if I if it's not. I don't know. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Because right, I have okay. just got a thousand things going on in my head right now. Okay. So, are, are you a part of the core group? The core group. Mm -mm. Oh, that's not you. Uh, the, what's up? The what's up? No, no, no. Are you a part of Jenny Weaver Ministries? 
No, no. Okay, all right, that's not you. Okay, no problem. All right. I mean, I, I was a lot, like, like, I did it for like a month, but that was like last year, long time ago. Oh, okay. So there's no shirt. What region are you in? I'm in Iowa. Oh, okay. United States. Okay. In the middle of Iowa. Okay. Where there's a, a million churches around me, but they're all very, they're religious, completely. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'm the only one with my hands up and, you know, so, which I did, I mean, I, there is a church where, uh, our apostle is very good, but it's just, it's like, it's stagnant. It's very stagnant. I think, I don't know. I mean, maybe I don't even know what I'm talking about, but I know that I know that I know something, you know what I mean? It's just. I need something. I don't know. Maybe I'm just jumping the gun, but I, right. I, I'm sorry because I'm not making any sense right now. All right, that's but fine. I am. All right, so let me jump in. So in the beginning okay, of in the beginning of your call, especially to the prophetic or ministry, it can definitely be a bit frustrating. And you you're you're literally trying to find a place where you can belong, where you can you can be at where you can be trained, you can be taught, etc. So it can definitely be a lot, right? No. In my early years of the ministry, for those of you that would have watched um, my story, my testimony, etc., I guess I'll come on and do my entire um, testimony one night. But uh, I was stuck without a church for a few years, actually. I was literally mm-hmm. stuck, could not find a church. It's not that there weren't many churches. I left this. I left the city where my actual home church was. So where I went, there were many churches. But for the years I've been in that region, I've never found a church until the Lord actually allowed me to plant a church. However, in mm-hmm. that space of time, I used to. In that, give me one second, guys. Please, I'm sorry. That's fine. Nick! All right, I'm sorry. So it is in this place. I believe that many of you that are here, you're pretty much right on schedule and you're where God wants you to be. So for this reason, we actually created the Prophetic Hub, which is an extension of our church elevation center. So most of the people that are here, um, I don't know. I don't know if persons don't see the messages that are sent into group from time to time. So persons miss out on the trainings. Persons constantly say, I miss out on the trainings. I hope that I will hope at least we can get a hundred persons that are part of the group on our trainings. But we created this group for this reason because most persons in this group do not have a church home in the region that they're in. Most persons in this group have just relocated to a whole new region away from family. They have no family. They have no friends. So they're trying to find a community. So wherever it is that you can be fed, current, if you can find one or two ministries that you can be fed from in that place, that's where God wants you to be so feed there continue to stay in the place of prayer and intercession and he's going to connect you with the right people the right church at the right time so I'd say don't overthink it don't try to be doing too much don't try to be pressing to find you know somewhere too hard that you end up in the wrong place so if you are connected somewhere where you're being trained you're being taught you may have at least two or three persons that you can entrust to feed your spirit be fed at that place until he connects you where you really need to be I was trained and taught by just you know there was just one church i used to just watch my home church that's it and then suddenly you know i was just reading a lot of books i was reading all the books i could read and spending as much time in prior and he just started to use me to prophesy and preach and i just started preaching all over that stage i was never a part of a church where i was going here for a specific time everyone's story is different there are some people that will be so blessed to be a part of a home church where they can minister there grow there be released there others he will just be the one to teach you where you are. So don't be afraid. Do not feel as though you're 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 being left out or you're not in the right place because you're not connected to you know a particular church. Sometimes it is God Himself, the Holy Spirit, that would train you and teach you before He releases you to do whatever you're called to do. 
All right, so I hope I hope that answered your question. Um, all right, so let me take this. Colby, I think your hand is up. Uh, but let me take this before. This has been in the comments for a while. So it says I have uh, five more minutes, so I'll take as many questions as I can in five minutes. So this person says, um, Mishka, I think. It says, Mishika, what is the marketplace anointing and what is the meaning? So... I'm not sure if a marketplace anointing as in an, an anointing per se, but there are persons who are who are anointed who are called to the marketplace. So there's kind of really no such thing as a marketplace anointing. It's really you being anointed, but you're called to the marketplace, actually. I think as prophets and quote unquote prophetic people, we have um a way to twist words and it just yeah, so there are some persons who are anointed who are called to operate in the marketplace. On the other hand, there are some persons who are anointed, but they're called to the ministry and the church. So when you go into the marketplace as, an, as a prophet or as someone who is anointed, you are sent so you can minister and make a difference in that place. So you now have a grace where you can excel above measure above anyone else in that region, in that um, actual marketplace. So you're literally sent in to go, you're, you're sent in as an anointed person in the marketplace where he will grant you extreme favor for extreme promotions for extreme takeover for extreme pioneering and domineering in that sphere so you're sent in to dominate basically to be the head and not the tail you're sent in to be the head not the tail to be the leader to take over because we need prophets and leaders that will be in the different spheres of society basically as prophets and anointed leaders we can't just be in the church we want to go out the bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous as far as i'm concerned i should be the president of jamaica because i'm a prophet i hear from god more than our government <laughs> why 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 can't y'all vote for me to be the president or the prime minister of jamaica why why mr gibbons why the simple answer is I never went to college to study economics or political sciences or none of that. I dropped out and I went to go study theology and go to Bible school for ministry. So the thing is, most persons who are anointed and called by God, they automatically assume that you have to drop out, you have to quit your job, you have to drop out of school and go into full-time ministry. That's not the case. Some persons are called to study medicine, to study politics, to study sciences, to study computer engineering, etc., Per prophets are called to operate in all these areas do you know why our children are being demonized and taken over by the enemy because they're watching these disney nonsense voodoo demonic witchcraft cartoons because christians are not going into the marketplace of hollywood to promote to, to record or to film their own you know our own cartoons and movies etc so we're literally called to dominate the seven mountains that god has given to us so it means you have the anointing to, to experience and to increase and take over in the marketplace right all right call me christy do you have a question yes um a question for you personally maybe um so usually every day when i'm in the presence of god i'll often um, cry in the presence i'm very sensitive i don't know if how often that is for you too um because my wife was like she just looks at me and she just sees me bawling in tears and like <laughs> out of nowhere and i just want to see if it's like is that the same with every person that's prophetic or a, a prophet they're very sensitive and often travailing or weeping yeah my husband hates that about me he's like you you cry too much i don't like going to church with you because you're always bawling get yourself together i mean he's fine but you know he says you cry too you, you do way too much once I, once the presence of God comes, I'm I'm just gonna start bawling my eyes out. I'm telling you the truth. When we get on this platform, sometimes and we we pivot to a we 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 go to a certain level. Sometimes, most times, I try to hold myself so I don't just disappear into another dimension, bawling. So I really try to compose myself when I'm with you guys sometimes. But once I go off on a tangent, I literally start bawling my eyes out. Okay. Yeah. I'm, sometimes I try not to cry so much at church, and I'm like, I'm trying to grieve the Holy Spirit, but I can't grieve, and I, I just keep crying. <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't grieve the Holy Spirit, and, or I mean, I quench the Holy Spirit, and it just keeps coming. <laughs> You're a no worshiper. Do you sing? You're a worshiper. Yeah, I'm. A, um, I do sing, and I play guitar. Yeah. Hmm. 
I, I see you. Call me, call me Christy. Do you have a YouTube channel? I see you. I see you. I see the Lord raising you on a pedestal. I see Colby Christy being raised on a pedestal. Um, so someone recently, another prophet prophesied that he sees me with an online ministry. Yeah. But I just, I'm just trying to figure out when the right time is. I, I know I need probably more preparation, but I'm in the process of preparing. So there's, there's, there's also, I prophesy that people are called to be prophets a lot, but there's a pastoral call that's on your life. I see you leading a generation of worshipers, a, 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 gen, a young generation of people who are hungry and thirsty for God. May the Lord raise you up and anoint you. Your wife also, your wife sings as well. She has a beautiful voice, does she? Yes. Yeah, I see both of you singing together. Beautiful, mel I hear you singing in the spirit. Beautiful songs. May the Lord bless you and favor you to write prophetic songs like never before. May His grace and His oil come upon you that you will lead this generation into a place of revival like never before. I prophesy, Colby, that the Lord is raising you up as a pastor in this gener for this generation that none has ever seen before. Your father, your father actually should have been a pastor. Where's your father? Um, so I live in New Jersey in the United States and my father is currently in Washington, mm -hmm. Washington State. Is he involved in ministry or was he involved in ministry? No, he was, he was never involved in ministry. Um, he was involved with a lot of bad stuff in his life. So, but. He was called by the Lord. May the Lord use you to bring him to God. May you be the one to baptize your, your father. So there's definitely a cause. I do pray that the Lord will connect you with the people that can, you know, help to, you know, train, mentor, you know, help to get you to that place of, you know, full maturity or understanding what your assignment is so you can begin to operate in that. But you're definitely called. I have no doubt about that. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. All right, let me take two more questions and that's it for tonight. What happens... What happens when you are called to the office of a prophet by an encounter with the Lord? How one navigates from there? Okay, so what happens when you're called to the office of a prophet by an encounter? Um, essentially, he begins to train you. You begin to go through a process of training, pruning, separation, mentorship, etc and he, he really just trains and prepares you for that office that he has called you to to be honest as it comes with a lot of um, persecution and warfare but it's just a part of the processing and training until you have reached maturity where he can release you to go into that call right elisa do you want to get on and be more direct with your question i think there's probably a part two to your question mm -hmm. Are any more questions? When is the when is the Lord um permitted to release one in their rightful office, like at the age? Wait, what's your question? Like you have the call on your life. Um, I know that you have to go through a process. Like how the process, depending on how um deep your call. Is the process, you know, like longer or the age, you know? Okay, okay. Some persons are released earlier, some persons later. Oh, no. It depends on how committed and submitted you are to that call. So, based on how committed you are, how surrendered you are, how given you are to the call of God, how much you seek him and your it, it's it's all it's it all depends on your surrender and your submission to be honest the more surrendered and committed you are and the more broken you are to be used by him is the more he will pour out anoint and be able to use you in such a capacity so there's there's no there's no age limit that you have to be a certain age to be used by him and there's really no time frame there are men and women of god that are beyond my age by by a far a long stretch that that they don't do half of what I do. I train and I mentor pastors who have been pastoring for years, pastors who have been pastoring for years, multiple pastors. 
have taken my prophetic courses and they say i don't do what you do how do you do it how do you call names how do you cast devils out but they have been pastoring for years so it's not an age thing to be honest um as a matter of fact i know prophets who are younger than i am i follow this prophet um a prof i have a prophetic friend she's she's a bit younger probably by just three or so years and she's 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 great she's phenomenal so it's not an age thing it's really how surrendered you are so if you are fully surrendered you you fully say yes then um you're seeking him you're being developed and matured it's all your it's about your maturity he's going to use you some persons it may take several years because they're not fully yielded some persons it can take just a matter of two weeks you can come to god this week get filled with the holy spirit tomorrow have an encounter with him by the third day and by the second week you're preaching up a storm and persons will say but you didn't go through the process you weren't sure you didn't go to bible school etc and he's using you right all right let me just go until 10 i don't think i'm actually going to do a youtube live tonight again time has way gone um alicia go ahead so let me just go until 10 actually with you guys So, um, you know how my whole life literally just got turned around in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just in, I don't know what to do, literally. Because everything that I used to do, I can't do. Okay. Um, you understand what I'm saying? Like how when I had the encounter, he said I was his prophet and then he told me I can't work. Okay. Um, my suggestion to you, the word of the Lord for you is stay in prayer. Stay in prayer. Seek him as much as you can. In this season, he's given you the time and the opportunity to seek him. So now, Alicia, you should be seeking him with everything that you have as much as you possibly can. As you seek him, he will begin to reveal his purpose, his plans, and his intentions for your life. So there are several things that you can do in this season. It depends what he's saying, but there are several things you can do while you're seeking him, such as paying attention to your YouTube ministry and whatever you have already started. You have time to spend time with that, to do that. And while you're seeking him, he gives you strategy. He gives you topics. He gives you ideas. He gives you an assignment on how you should do, what you should do, when you should do it. So that way it begins to increase and grow um, from strength to strength, from grace to grace. So spend time to seek him. He has pulled you into a place of isolation, not to be isolated, just to be unsure, you know, to question what, how, why, when, whatever. It's really to seek him. Whenever you are unsure, and this, and this is general, not just for Elysia. Whenever you are unsure, you really should be praying and pressing in to seek him at that point in time, to be honest. All right. All right so who has okay, the other question? You. You're welcome, darling. Who has my other question? Me, Prophetess. Who is that? Okay, go ahead. Prophetess, um, me, me, me got you a lot of rejection, so me I wonder why, or why, why, how come, or make? What, you're wondering why you go through rejection? Yeah, people just hate me for nothing at all. People just see me and just hate me. Oh, I'll send you a, I'll, I'll, I did a video on YouTube on Wednesday on rejection. You should go and watch that video. That will answer your question in great depth. So go to my YouTube and um, for everybody that is, has gone through rejection, go watch that video. It will help you to great depth, in great depths. Um, Faith says, what do you do when you have been getting words that it's your time and it's your season, but you're still unsure about your calling? Book me as your life coach. <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Emma. Um, hold on a second. Hello. I'm still on faith. The answer is book Prophetess Shani. If you're unsure about your calling and it is your time, book go so research Prophetess Shani Beckford and book her as your life coach. <laughs> That's the answer. <laughs> but um, seriously though, 
I honestly, I would, I would, I would honestly love to sit with you, like seriously sit with you to pick your brain, um, just to pull some things out of you. As a matter of fact, you have done a live coaching session with me before and we have spoken. I think what you need is more, um, accountability to start and to be consistent in what you should be doing. I think that's, that's it. So sometimes it's not that you're not sure. It's a matter of how do I really start doing this? Sometimes you know what you are passionate about. You really want to do that God is calling you to do. But it's a matter of how do I really start? You have never done this thing before. You have never done it. It's a whole new thing. It's it's, it's, it's out of your comfort zone. You don't know what's going to be the outcome. What's going to be the support of what you're going to do. So how do you really start doing that? And then once you start, it's a matter of you being consistent some of you are caught to start youtube channels you're caught to start women ministries whatsapp group with women where you will meet once per week and pray some of you will start um, a deliverance group where once per week you'll get on you'll do deliverance prayers there's so much that some of you are called to do but you have never done it before so you will not know if persons will actually want to be a part you will not know if your prayers or your once per week preaching will actually be effective or have an impact on someone until you start doing it and maybe some of you are worried that oh maybe only one person will get on that should never be your worry be be consistent with whatever it is that you do when you see people start coming on and they're telling you oh the service was good i was blessed i was healed i was delivered i felt the spirit of god and the testimony is beginning to come in then you will know that you're truly caught to this or when you see the warfare coming the uncertainty the doubt the what ifs the but that is also a sign that you're really caught to this thing but the devil is trying to block you from actually starting right so i'll take this opportunity next week tuesday the 13th of the 13th of march i have a prophetic workshop it's called launch the topic of the workshop is a prophetic workshop is called launch It's for four nights. I'm going to be teaching on prophetic codes, language and symbolisms. So I'm giving you guys over a hundred, a hundred prophetic symbolisms, which is the colors, the numbers, the fire, the crown, just random things in the Bible, random items, pictures, things that you imagine or see that the Lord is using to speak to you. I also am I'm in the process of finalizing a manual. So those of you that have read stored you haven't gotten your manual as yet you're going to get it before we start so i'm working on a manual all you guys will have to do is print the manual out write in your vision statement it tells you where to write the vision where to write your mission I'm giving you a schedule, a daily schedule that you can print multiple copies. You can put in, I'll do a live stream Monday. I'll do a session Wednesday so you can fill in what days you're going to do a live stream or upload a content video or something, whatever you're called to do. I'm giving you over a hundred and probably over 150 topics. So if you're called to preach, you're called to pray, you're called to YouTube. I'm giving you all the topics you can preach, pray, talk about. All you have to do is go research more on it. I'll teach you how to do it. You can choose any topic from the list because some persons struggle. What can I talk about? I'm running out of ideas. I'm giving you a list of ideas to choose from, to pray about, to teach about, which makes this whole thing much easier for you. And I'll teach you guys how to start, how to launch the ministry. I'm, I'm making it easy for you guys. It's usual, it is uh, $150, but someone has generously partnered with us. So we have dropped the prices to $99. So it's next week, Tuesday. You can register only $99 dollars register is going to be good all right um three minutes Can on I the clock yes go ahead um are prophets um gatekeepers because i well i was dozing off and um i heard the audible voice of the lord says that you are a gatekeeper because um i was thinking about a dream that i had where i was given a lot of keys and I was contemplating and praying about it and wondering what it meant, what it meant. So I heard the, the audible voice of the Lord says that you are a gatekeeper. I have been researching it and um, studying scriptures and reading into it, but I still don't fully grasp exactly what I am to do or what I'm a gate, gatekeeper of. Okay. All right. So persons who are called as gatekeepers or shamar or prophetic watchmen they're really called to to guard to monitor to stand on their watch to monitor and to gatekeep yes, I do have a lot of dreams. 
it, 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 it can be in the form of dreams. Most frequently, it may be in the form of dreams or through intercession where he will begin to reveal things to you, whether visual or audible. And from that, um, he reveals certain things before they happen. So you can be called to be a gatekeeper for your family, for a church, for a nation. It, it, it depends what it is that the Lord wants you to monitor and pay attention to in that season. So he'll give you insights, foresight, hindsight, oversight on things concerning your family your church your nation whatever it is every single thing on the face of this earth as far as i'm concerned has a gate as humans we have a gate we have portals the earth realm has a gate has a portal cities have a portal countries have a portal the church has a portal and so we're called to gatekeep um these portals and gates to into to see what is it that the enemy wants to send in if there's a demonic attack that's about to happen if it is that something is coming from the spiritual realm is it from the demonic or is it from the spirit of the lord is it sickness is it wealth so it's not just demonic but it's also the good things that god wants to usher into um usher into the portals so there's a lot that i could um get into for that my dear so i say pay attention to your dreams um pay attention to your dreams and your visions um the I things that are symbolic books. i write them in i have books about six books so this is this dreams. If you should, if someone like you, this course that I'm doing would be very, um, would be very helpful, especially with the the prophetic symbolisms. For those of you who are watchmen, especially prophetic seers, God speaks to you through visual means, and it's often things that are very symbolic. So if you keep seeing a crown, if you keep seeing blood, if you keep seeing a snake every time you close your eyes, you see a snake. There are several meanings that are attached to these symbolisms, and He speaks through these things. Sometimes we miss hearing what God is saying because we are expecting Him to speak audible or to say something when He's just showing you a simple pink color a simple thing that just pops up before you over and over the numbers etc he's saying something through that right all right that's my time let me take one more two more i see two hands up let me take these two and that's it um will it go ahead your hand has been up So listening to this is kind of confusing because um, I want to know if I walk, if I'm an evangelist because I'm able to go from state to state and live and I don't meet any strangers, but I'm like a chameleon. I can fit wherever I go. Hmm. When you go into these states, what do you do? Each time you move, what, what do you do when you're there? What is the assignment when you're there? I don't... So usually um, when I went to Georgia, that's when I had lost everything going to California. And God kind of trained me there. When I went to... North, then I from there, I went to North Carolina. But I was there um, helping young people and sh kicking them out of North Carolina. Hmm. Okay. There's a lot that I can share with you that I would um, probably share a bit more personal um, or one-on-one. -on -one. But um, I see what you're doing with social media and your interviews and stuff. Um, so I do believe that what you're doing is exactly what you should be doing. Um, you don't have a community or a home church, which is what makes it a bit hard for some persons. Um, settling in an official ministry or actual church to be a part of something or to be more official in whatever it is that you do. But um, in terms of being an evangelist, evangelists are soul winners. They're going to win souls for the kingdom of God. It's not a matter of meeting strangers. It's a matter of just leading people to God. So if, you're, if you have never or you are not passionate about or you can never see yourself do this or God has not spoken it to you any at all then it is it, possibly not you're not called to be an evangelist but if you're called to be an evangelist wherever it is that you go you're going to win souls for God even without you trying to do so you'll just have random conversations spontaneously without without planning on it and you're leading souls to God some persons are evangelists and it comes naturally you're out of the supermarket you're on the street before you know it you're talking to someone and you're telling them about God that's all my conversations 
Okay, so I think you're you're probably thinking into it way. You're probably thinking it thinking into it a bit way too much. Um, probably so. Yeah, we probably would have to um, fine tune. So what I did tonight was really give you guys a breakdown in a nutshell of the five personalities of the fivefold ministry. But if I were to go a bit more in depth on each of these, then um, it can bring you a bit more clarity. But I think you're kind of thinking deeper into it. You're doing a good job with your interviews. It's a matter of you being consistent, finding a greater, you know, um, finding you know your purpose and the assignment on what is it that you are hoping to actually gain at the end of this for. You to work in that complete fulfillment of it basically okay thank um, you you're welcome all right um the last one um miss beautiful lady do you have a question this is my last one and let's spring and go i've had you guys for two hours yes um so recently like for the past couple of weeks i've been like each time i would come home i would just all of a sudden feel sleepy and i would just go in maybe a trance or something mm -hmm. and i would see like a role play of something happen but each time this would happen i would see someone of influence for the last time that i had a dream just two two or three days ago i saw um popcorn and he was telling me that i should come to his show and he knows that i am not of the world i i am a i'm a big preacher so I should come because there's a lot of people there for me to speak to. And then I said to him, okay, and I walked away. But when I walked away, I ended up on a main road. And I saw Shadeen, Shadeen Anglin, and six other ladies. And they were in full white. And I was also in white. And I joined them. And I saw them playing ball with some firefighters. But... There was something significant about this ball game. Each time the ball would land in Shadeen's hand, she would be preaching. And the ball was thrown and it went into a pool of water. It was blue water. Nobody wanted to go. So I went and she said, take your shoes off. I took my shoes off and she said, you know what, uh, follow me because I'm used to this. I'm used to doing this. And I told her that I'm not scared. But then after she said that, I went to my no job that I'm working and this man came in and two persons were serving him, but they were grumpy. And I went there and I took over and I served him. And he then came to me and said, you're very special. And he gave me something in my hand and he said, put it in your pocket. He was adamant that I put it in my pocket and I put it in my pocket and I walked away. The two persons that were um, being grumpy towards him came to me and said that he said that I'm supposed to share with them. But I knew that they were lying. So I put my hand in my pocket to check to ensure that what he gave me was still in my pocket. And each time I would pull out, money would, would just keep coming out. Each time I would put my hand back, there would be additional money, additional money, additional money, and I just woke up. Mm -hmm. But I would constantly get these dreams of persons of influence, like persons that are that have big influence. I would keep on getting dreams and seeing them. And they're inviting me to come. Okay. Um, one, you're, you're, you're honestly just coming into um, to ministry. Um, you're really just starting to come into the fullness of who you are. And I believe that the Lord will begin to use you mightily. When I just came into the whole prophetic, I had that dream. I've had several. I have. I had one in particular that actually I released in the Gleaner in Jamaica. The observer was it the Gleaner or the Observer? I think it was Jamaica Observer. I they they came to me actually. It was some gospel artists this time actually they came to me and they invited me to join them they wanted me to sign a paper to join them if i did they showed me how popular i would be and how many thousands of people would follow me um it was actually um they came with this quote-unquote pastor that was wearing this tall red robe a tall red robe when i saw them i knew that this was some form of mm -mm, it wasn't god I walked away and I don't remember the fullness of it, but I know that I denied and I walked away and what was it? 
There was something. The Lord said something specific to me. He said something very specific to me. Oh, yes. I walked away and I said to him, I would rather to die broke and go to heaven than to go to hell um, wealthy. There was a scripture that I quoted and I woke. I don't remember the scripture right now, but I woke up. And I've had several of those where I was invited to be initiated, to be a part of them because they saw what was going to come. So the, trust me, now you have to pray more than ever. You have to pray more than ever to cover yourself, to cover yourself spirit to cover your ministry your assignment and the grace that god is placing on your life because the enemy will now try to try to win you for them a lot of people have you know crossed over become tainted sold themselves out to be popular prophets etc so you can expect that they know that you're coming and they will try to get to you to um to sell out your purity and what god has given to you all right okay okay all right, let's pray in the spirit. Um, let's pray in the spirit one more time. Let's pray a prayer of activation, and that is it. I've had you guys for very long. So for those of you who are on Colby, I invite you to join us for the training. If you are on, you're not sure what your purpose is, guys, for the month of... For the entire 2023, actually, we have live coaching sessions as low as $50 for only 35 minutes. Our regular session is 1 hour 30 minutes for $100, but you can do at least 35 minutes for $50. But take advantage of our prophetic courses that are being offered for $99 only for this month. It's only $99 only for the month of March. After that, it goes back to the original cost. So take advantage of that. If you are on, you're not interested in, in any of these, I did share with you before, um, Miss Unapologetically. What's your What's your current name? Monique Francis. Monique Francis. Okay, perfect. Why did I forget that? So, Monique, for for those of you who are on, if you're not interested in any of the courses at this point, but you want a partner, I did tell you guys um, a few months ago. You guys helped us to purchase um, our cameras, which was a bit expensive, and a few other things we wanted to get. I did say that once we finally complete our relocation of the church, we're going to try to find a building. No, we're in the process of finding a building. We want to get a good building. We want to begin to we want to officially open our church in this side of the country it's going to be um the budget that we have based on the prices of the building and putting everything in furnishing everything we're looking at five thousand dollars four or five to five thousand that's it i don't know i need you i need help i need your help so for those of you that can partner each time you partner i will let you know on a weekly basis or so where we are so when I get to the official 5,000, 4, 5 to 5,000, I will let you guys know we're there. But that's the goal we're working towards. So hopefully within the next month or two to three months, hopefully, we will have this building up and running. We will have to reschedule. We may have to reschedule our services for Sunday to an earlier time. And then you can worship with us on social media. But we'll probably have to go to 6 a.m. Sunday morning. We probably can't do the Friday night. So we'll do Wednesday and another night. So we'll have to shift some things around as we open so if anyone is on your in Kingston you're in St. Catherine you're a worshiper we need worshipers we have we have quite a few things we have drums we have chairs we need more chairs but we have drums keyboards camera we need some TVs we need the space more importantly we need to rent the space it is the rent and the deposit so we need the help so we need five thousand dollars so people like Brittany can just wire me five thousand dollars boom just like that you got it <laughs> <laughs> got it. You got it. I got you. All right. So, um, but seriously though, whatever it is that you can give, we need um the fifty dollars, the hundred dollars, whatever it is. If you're um just once you are giving towards the church building and starting the church, please make a note that this is for the church building. Make a note of it. This is for the church building. All right. So let us unmute as you give. I'm going to be praying for that as well. But let's unmute for a minute. I'm going to be praying divine activation. I want you to pray in the Holy Spirit as I pray divine activation for you tonight.